for a preacher. Well, before you go, go ahead and announce this. This is your brainchild. Hello. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Long time no talk to. All right, so this is our other part of our outreach. Uh, today, when you leave service, we have made these cute little, well, we didn't make them. It's a little peep thing. Aren't they the cutest little thing? First of all, who likes peeps? Okay, these are not those kind of peeps, the marshmallow ones. These are, who likes candy? Because these are the candy ones. Yeah, me too. I'm with you. All right, so this is filled with candy. And what we've done is we've attached a little card. And it says, come to church with me this Easter. It has our service times. It has our location. And it has this cute little um, bunny rabbit who's dabbing. Yeah, I'm cool. Okay. <laughs> I thought I'd get a better response. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> Dab. Okay. Something. Okay, I'm not that cool. But anyway, there is a QR code on it. If you scan the QR code, it takes you right to this great uh, page that gives all the information. So God's going to put somebody on your heart to hand one of these two, if you want to. We're not making you take them or anything. But if you want to, if you think of somebody, just like Nicole said, Somebody out there needs to be invited. Easter is the easiest time to invite people to church. Did you know that? Did you know that people are expecting to be invited to church? God's already working on their hearts, and I love what Nicole said. She said this, if God's put somebody on your heart, he's already dealing with their heart, okay? All he needs is you to be that connection. So we've made it easy with these little peeps too, okay? So make sure you grab one on the way out, only if you really have somebody in mind, okay? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Pastor Donna. Guys, it's always easier to invite somebody when you have a gift for them, even if it's something this simple, because it puts their guard down. And as you start sharing with them, you're first sharing that you care about them, and then they're going to be open to receive what you say. Why do we want them to come to church? Because we don't want them to go to hell. It's that simple. If you leave this earth, and we've had a few leave this earth recently, but we're so thankful that they, know who Je they knew who Jesus was. Now they're in glory. They're, they're, they're enjoying the benefits and the fullness of what God provided through his son. But you know what? If, if we don't reach out to them, who will? And if you have friends that you think, you know, well... You know, I don't think I'm going to spend 10 bucks inviting them. They're not worth 10 bucks. Well, these are free. So you, these are for your friends that you're not willing to invest 10, 10 bucks in. So I'm just kidding. Boy, tough crowd today. What's going on? So, Pastor Chris, you're up. No, I'm just kidding. So anyway, um, but one thing I do want to say, guys, and this is, really, this is really serious. These are not for your consumption. So don't take them, pop them open, and eat them as soon as you get in the car. These are for other people to be invited to church. So if you eat these, God's watching. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But um, I would encourage you to give them to somebody and uh, invite them to church. Because like, like uh, Nicole said, God's already, he's helping you. The pressure's not on you. He's already dealing with their hearts. You just have to be that vessel that... That delivery boy, the invitation, he's already putting on their heart. Amen? And we're providing two services, so either way it works. Well, I don't get up early, come to the later service. Well, I got a lot to do, come to the early service. Um, any way it goes, there's a place for them to come. Amen? Let's pray and get started today. And we want to welcome our fa online family. Tell them how much we appreciate them. We love them. Peace from God's house to your house. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word. We thank you for the series that we're going to be wrapping up today. I thank you that it has been seed sown in our hearts. That as we've been open and we've been receptive and we, we, we've opened ourselves up to receive this, Father, I thank you for revelation knowledge that has flown from your throne to our heart to help us to have comprehension of what it means to enjoy and receive and to believe the love that you have for us, and then to learn how to open our hearts and let it flow not only to us, but through us into the world around us. We thank you for that. We give you glory and honor today. We believe that we'll be better when we leave than when we got here, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to, what have we learned so far? We've learned that what? Because of God's love, we're able to love God completely. Read them with me. I got all three of them up here. We're able to love God completely. We're able to love self correctly, 
and we're able to love others compassionately. And that's the part that we're, we're winding up today, is learning and seeing how God has empowered us to love other people compassionately. Because how many know there's some people that you may not, you may not in your heart, honestly, based on your limited, fragile, human love, you may not see yourself being able to love that person, whoever it is. That, that person that maybe they haven't brought joy to your life. But yet God is he's telling us that we're to love them. And today we're going to learn exactly how we're able to do that, how God has empowered us to rise above our own limited human ability and, and, and step into his love and allow his love to flow through us in a way where they can be impacted not by us, but by God through us. Does that make sense? And that's the way that we turn enemies into frenemies. You know what I mean? I mean, that, that neighbor that you can't stand suddenly will become, wow, we've got a great thing. Now we're studying the Bible together. Now we're talking about what Jesus is doing together because you've let the love of God flow through you. And a lot of times those mean people in your life, have, how many of you ever had a mean person in your life? Somebody's just not nice. Who didn't raise your hand? I want to go to wherever you live because I've got more than one in my life where they're just not that nice. And you know, if, if you, I probably was that person that wasn't that nice. I used to have a bad attitude towards life, towards people. But when somebody introduced me to the love of God, when somebody let me see, so then I can, I, I, I see that God loves me, I believe it, I receive it, and suddenly I went from being a person who was out looking for trouble to somebody that's out looking for those who are troubled. And God uses me to, to be a blessing to them because I've got out of his way and allowed him to flow through me. Does that make sense? And that's really the design and the plan and the, the purpose that God has for each and every one of us. We know that God is, is, is amazing. He loves us just incredibly. We see it all throughout Scripture. We see how compassionate he is. We're to love other people compassionately. The Bible talks about he was moved by compassion. It talks about his compassion, the Lord's compassion. And we see it. And then, you know, the, the thing is, when you, when you think about compassion... You know, we, we've got to kind of identify, what does that actually mean? What does it mean for him to be moved with compassion? How am I supposed to love people compassionately? And the word picture in, in, the, in the Greek language for compassion is actually somebody who has ability, who has resource, who has substance, bending down to help those who don't, those in need. And that's the picture of God to us. He has all of this. He has this... This, this unlimited love that he's pouring out and he's wanting to bring it down and he wants us, us to receive it. And then once we receive it, we literally become a spout for his love to flow out. And that love can impact and touch other people's lives and help them get to the place where they see themselves as loved, accepted. You know, there's so many times in life that people disqualify themselves because they decide... God couldn't love me. God can love them, but he couldn't love me. Look what I've done. Look where I've come from. Look what's happened in my life. There's no way God can love me. And even though God loves every single person on the planet, his love does them no good because they, they don't open the valve to receive it. How I many know his love flows to everybody? John 3, 16, God so loved the world. He loves, he loves the people that hate him. He loves the people that rail against him. He loves the people that say he doesn't exist. And it's not that he loves us anymore. The only difference is that we've seen it. We've experienced it and we, we believe it and we receive it. That's the only difference. God loves every single person on the planet. But they just haven't, they haven't positioned themselves to be able to see it. And that's what we need to help them with. That's our job. That, that's, that's our mission as, as believers is to, is to be that person that comes into a situation and instead of judgment and ridicule and anger and all this kind of stuff, what comes in, no matter what they're doing, what comes in is this love of God, this acceptance of God. Not accepting what they do, accepting them so he can free them from what they do. There's a difference. People have used God to be a judgment, a, a hammer, to beat people over the head. That's not God's role. God comes in and loves us first, and he loves us so much we don't stay where we are. 
He doesn't come in and condemn us and beat us until we get right. Jesus came and loved us when we were yet sinners. He made us right so then we could walk right. Does that make sense? You guys with me? So let's look and see how this plays out with our scriptures. Let's go to our text scriptures. We'll just get started and then we'll go on. Have a little computer trouble here, but that's okay. Matthew chapter 22, starting in verse 37. This is our text scriptures for the series. It says, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. The other translations say with all your strength. I mean the other um, gospels. Verse 38 says, This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. When we hear Jesus say this, and again, this was before Jesus was crucified. This was before he fulfilled the law and then went and, and sat at the right hand of the Father. And now, because of what he accomplished, we now receive the love of God onto the inside of us. We get this brand new birth. We become a brand new person in Christ. And we're empowered to do what? To do exactly what he tells us to do. And as we receive this and as we understand, I, I, I can't... I can't stress about loving God with my whole heart. Because there's some days I don't feel like loving God. There's some situations where things happen. I get around people that are irritating and things like that. Where I don't, I, don't feel like love, I don't feel like loving anybody. So does that disqualify me? Does that separate me from God? No. Because we're going to see that it's not our human love that he's talking about. He's asking us to receive his love. So then when we receive this supernatural, unconditional love, unlimited love when we receive this now we're able to love him completely with the love that he's poured out in our in our heart look at the, our other scriptures for the series we're going to first john four nineteen. we love him because he first loved us and a more um, exact translation of that is actually we love the hymn was placed there by the king james translators to try to help us understand. But the actual Greek language there is we love because he first loved us. We're able to love. We're, we're, we have now have the capacity to love because we've received his love. We love because he first loved us. Well, how do we know this? Because of Romans 5.5. 5. The love of God has been poured out into our hearts. He's equipped us. When his love poured out, it started this incredible chain reaction to where now we rise above our, 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 our frail, weak, unstable human love, and we now, with this love that's been poured out into our hearts, we now are able and we're, we advance to this God ability of loving. We don't become God, but suddenly we have his love on the inside of us. And who's his love? God so loved the world, what did he do? He gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe will be saved. Jesus Christ is the express love. It's, it, it's the express image of the love of God. And when we receive Jesus, we receive God's love. Does that make sense? And as he comes into our heart, he fixes and, and corrects all that junk that's gone on in there. And then as we, as we handle it right, not only does it help us, but now we're able to let it flow through us into the people around us. Because you're not the answer for them. Jesus is. But they can receive that through you as you let the love of God flow through you. Does that make sense? You guys with me? There's a whole world out there that needs this, and we tap into this, this incredible chain reaction where God pours out his love. We receive it into our heart. We believe it, and then because of that, we can now love him completely, and we're able to love ourselves correctly, which means we're not arrogant. We don't get full, full of ourselves. We're also not down on ourselves and discouraged by ourselves, and we hate ourselves. We love ourselves correctly. We start loving ourselves the way that God loves us. We start seeing the value in ourselves that God sees in us and not what the world tells us isn't in us. Remember what we say, I am who the I am says I am. Our, the best reflection of who we are is found in God's word, right? So all this is going and it's building us up to the point where now God's love's flowing through us it, it literally flows through us. Every single person in this room. Maybe you're, I don't know all of you. I don't know what you've done. I don't know where you've come from. I don't know the things that have happened in your life. But I know this, God loves you. God absolutely loves you. 
and he has this life for you. He has this healing, this, this, this redeeming love that comes in and it just makes things right. It doesn't erase things that have happened, but it heals the hurts and lets you learn from the experience so you can go on and help other people that are dealing with the same thing. It doesn't make everything go away and suddenly we live in Disney World all the time. We still live in a fallen world, but we have God and his love on our side that enables us to represent him in a lost and broken world. Does that make sense? And when people see his love, and that's what we're going to look at, when people see his love that flows out of us, they're going to be drawn to him. They're going to be drawn to a Savior who will accept them right where they are, who will accept them, who will, will meet them, who will bring healing to them, who will redeem them, who, who will pick them up, brush them off, and tell them what's right with them, show them what he has for them, show them the gifts he's placed inside of them, show them the point of, or, or the, the, the purpose for their creation. You were made on purpose, with a purpose, and he'll show you this, and then he empowers you to go out and to accomplish this, impacting the world for his glory. It all starts with the love of God. Amen? And that's what we're, to, we're, we're, we're seeing, and hopefully you've learned that you can love God. You can love God by faith completely. It's not based on your feelings. It's based on your capacity that now you've been filled with his love. You can learn to love yourself in spite of what anybody's told you, your coaches, your teachers, your neighbors, your frenemies, your enemies, the mean girls, the mean guys. You can learn to love yourself in spite of what's happened. And you can rise above what's happened to become the person that God's created you to be. Make sense? So we see this, and we see that as, as we, we walk in this and we learn to love ourselves, then all of a sudden we have the capacity to love the people around us. We have the capacity to, to let that love flow through us into people where it would have been a challenge before. Now we have this ability to walk in love with them. We have this ability to look beyond their imperfections, to rise above our imperfections, and let the love of God pour through us into them to help them receive what God has for them. Does that make sense? So as we do this, and we've learned to love ourselves correctly, the next step is automatically to love others compassionately. And as we get ready for this, I want you to turn with me to John chapter 13, starting in verse 34. Some of the, you know, there's a lot of things we covered in the last five weeks. This is part six. So if, if there's something that you're not catching, I can't go back and rehash all of it or we won't have any time for today. So um, I encourage you to go back to our, um, our online on um, YouTube, uh, Faith Family Church FL, and you'll be able to look at all those uh, different segments and see the things that we've already covered. But in John chapter 13, verse 34, we're getting ready to start now. We see that through this chain reaction that God poured his love, we believed and received his love, the capacity to love him has now been released inside of us. We now have that. Now we can love ourselves and, and we can allow the healing power of God to come in and fix those things that life has done, the bumps, the bruises, and the habits that we've got into. God can come in. He can heal. He can redeem. He can set free. doesn't matter if you're carrying guilt or shame or anything. God can set you free from that. Because the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross was enough. You say, well, Pastor, you don't know what I've done. I don't have to. I know what Jesus did, and Jesus was enough. You know what? You, you may have done things that just some of us can't even imagine. Jesus was enough. You, you may have committed sins that the world says is an atrocity. Jesus was enough. But you have to let that love in. You have to let it in. Now we're there. Look at John 13. This is Jesus speaking, and we've, we've, we've already read where he says that you're to love God completely, you're to love yourself correctly, and you're to love your neighbor as yourself. But now look at this. Jesus says, and a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So here's Jesus, he comes up, and here we're getting a hold of this, and everything's going good, and now all of a sudden Jesus says, hold on, I got a, I got a new command for you. What he's saying is, I've got an update. How many of you ever got an update on your phone or your computer? You know, you need to do the update, right? Because if you do, things don't work right. Jesus is saying, hey, I got an update for you. Here's a new, here's a new commandment. This, it's not in contradiction to the one we already looked at. It's an upgrade. It's an update where he says, now, not only are you to love people the way you love yourself, 
He says, but I want you to love people the way I've loved you. That's, yeah, that, that could seem overwhelming. I, I, I'm just now getting a hold of the fact that God can love me, and now he wants me to love somebody else just like that? But it's that empowering love of God that enables us to do this. We've got to look beyond our own resource and look at what God's made available to us. And when Jesus, whenever God tells you to do something, anywhere in the world, when God tells you to do something, he empowers you to do it. He enables you. He gives you the ability. He gives you the capacity to do it. So when Jesus looks out and says, hey, I got something new for you. Now love people the way I've loved you. We need to sit back and by faith say, I can do it. I can do this. I don't know how, but I know I can. And God's going to reveal it to me as I dig in and I find out what he's saying to me. Does that make sense? You guys with me? So we got this new update. We've got this new commandment that he's telling us that we're to love our neighbors just like he loved us. Well, how did he love us? What's the scripture say? I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And then there's, there's, a, there's a reason for it. There's a, there's a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, there's a result, as good as any, there's, there's a result of us stepping up to this new commandment that he's telling us. There's a result of us loving other people the way he does that he says that then the world, the people around us, the people we don't know, they're going to see him in us and they're going to know that we're his disciples because of the way we're loving on each other. Because of the way, and what I'm saying is, it's not just about church on Sunday. You know where we walk in and we, hey, how you doing? Bless you, brother. Yeah, that's great. Hey, how's it going? Hey, man, Jesus, glory. Yeah, all right, yeah. And then when we walk out, we go, oh, man, I'm glad that's over. I can get back to being myself. No, it's talking about the way we conduct ourselves in life. It's talking about how we represent outside of the church. How many know it's easy to love the people who come into church? Most of the time. Most of the time. There's a few. They don't know who they are, so don't point. But anyway, there's a few where they're a little tough. But most of the time, it's easy to love people in church. When it gets sticky, it's out there. But you know, our most effective witness is not in here. Our most effective witness is out there. Out there when we're loving the unlovely. Out there when we're loving each other in front of the world. And they say, what's going on with that? Why, why are you treating them like that? Why, what's going on? They will literally take notice of the fact that we have love for each other. And the way we treat each other. And it will be something, it's a calling card for them to be drawn to. To receive the love of God. It's almost an example. We're not that we... We become God, but we become like God, His image and His likeness, by loving on people out in the world. I, was, I walked out of Sam's the other day, and I had this, um, I, I had a case of something, I don't remember what it was exactly. And I walk out, you know, they have the thing where they, they check your receipt, and then they scan a few things in your car. If you don't go to Sam's, you know what I'm talking about. But then they've got this scanner, and they scan a few things in your car, and if it all lines up, they say, okay, you can go to make sure you're not taking anything. Well, I walk out there, and I get to my car, and I realize I didn't pay for that case of stuff on the bottom. I was like, oh my gosh. And I look at the time, I'm going to be late. So I'm sitting there, and I think, you know, it's a big line in there, and I thought, oh man, I got to go back in there. I don't want to go back in there. So I wait, the guy that collects the carts is coming by. I say, hey, hey, excuse me. I go, can you come here? He goes, yeah, what do you need? I go, listen, I say, you see this, this, whatever it was, case of soda or something. I said, I didn't pay for this. I said, can you take it back in for me? Because I don't have time to go back in and pay for it. Can you take it back in for me? You sure? And I go, yeah, just take it back in. So he picks it up and he takes it in. A lady who's packing her car a couple cars over, she walks up to me and she goes, I guess she goes. And I thought, oh boy, what's going on? You're a Christian, aren't you? I said, yeah. I said, Why? She goes, I saw what you did there. She goes, I could tell you were a Christian. People notice the way we carry ourselves out in the world. And it's a witness to them. And they may, maybe she didn't, I don't know if she knew Jesus or not. She didn't say, bless you, brother, I'm in agreement with you, nothing like that. She just like pointed her finger and said, you're a Christian. And then she kind of looked at me like, okay, I told you. And then she walked away. 
But what we do out there affects how the world sees God. And, and if we show the love of God out there, it will, open, it will draw them to be open to receive of love of God in their hearts. Does that make sense? You guys with me? So we got a new commandment. He says, you know, do this update, get this. We need you to, re- to download this so you can go to the next level. Now turn with me to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, we're going to start in verse 1. It's going to be on the screen. It says, therefore, be imitators of God. What is an imitator of God? It's somebody who does something like God does it, right? You ever see a little kid, as, you know, like I watch with Jack, he does it, but when Chris was little, he would do it, how they would act like they would imitate their father. If you're sitting there watching TV or something like that, they'll look at you and they'll put their hands the same way. Little Jack used to go like this because he, he hung out with his Bama a lot, and he would be looking at something, he'd go like this. Now, this is when he's two years old, he'd go, hmm, like that. And I'm like, where did he get that? And he's like, hmm. And then I look over, and Donna's looking at something. She's going, hmm. <laughs> he's imitating her. And, and what we're being told here in Ephesians, the Apostle Paul is telling us, he says, therefore be imitators of God. Act like you think God would act. Not how people deserve, but how, because how many know God didn't act like what we deserved? He came and gave us what we needed, not what we deserved. We all deserved hell. We all deserved to be rejected. But he came and gave us what we needed, which was a Savior. So it says, be imitators of God as beloved children. And walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Now let's back up and look at this phrase, walk in love. Now, this phrase, walk in love, in the Greek language, this is in the present active imperative. You don't have to remember that, but I'm just letting you know what it is. It's in the present active imperative. And what it means is, it says walk in love means present active, which is to be a continuous repeated action. So what it means is when you walk in love, you don't just walk in love for a moment, but what Jesus is saying, if you're going to be an imitator of God, you're to live a life of walking in love. You're to live a life of what is walking? Walking is a symbol of living. It's, it's the way you live your life. So when it says walk in love, you should live your life allowing the love of God to flow through you. And it's continue repetitive, which means you don't get, you don't, you know, hey, how you doing? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll do it for you. But glad that's over. No, no, no. We walk in love every day. We walk in love because we're followers of Christ. We're his dear children. We're imitators of him. So when we wake up in the morning, we prepare ourselves to walk in love. Not to take account of a suffered wrong. Not to be offended by what somebody says or does. Not to be angry at what that politician did or didn't do. We're to walk in love. Doesn't mean we excuse things. We walk in love. We don't say it's okay. Whatever you do is okay. We say, no, no, excuse me. Just let you know. Crashing into my car with that shopping cart is not the right thing to do. But I'm going to walk in love with you because the supernatural power of God is flowing through me right now and I'm not yielding to my own carnal, limited, shallow bucket of human love which says, I'm really mad at you right now. We don't excuse it. We don't become a rug for people to walk on because love is the most powerful force in the universe. You know, the Bible says a kind word turns away wrath. You want to diffuse a situation? Don't jump up and yell in their face. Say, let a kind word flow out of you. And it disarms people. They're like, I was talking to somebody the other day, Clay, and he was telling me about how he was pulling into this parking space. He was waiting on it. And he was going, and he, he went to turn in. And this other guy thought it was his parking space. And the guy started screaming and yelling and acting like he wanted to fight him and stuff. And just yelling. And Clay, his old nature would have done something different. But he's learning about who he is in Christ and, and allowing God's love to flow through him. And he actually said, hey, okay, no, you know, that's yours. I'm sorry, I didn't mean, I didn't know you were, you know. And the guy didn't know what to say. When Clay wasn't ready to fight back, where he was ready to just keep going, when he just said, hey, you know, sorry, and just let the love of God flow through him, that guy was completely disarmed. Yeah. Well, I didn't want it anyway, you know. <laughs> it, it, but it's the way that it works. When we, when we are imitators of our Heavenly Father... The power of God flows through us. 
Does that make sense? And this is telling us that it should be a uh, continuous, repeated action. So we're to live a life of love. We're to walk in love. We're to do it in such a way that other people can see that there's something different about us than the other person walking down the street. It's like, a, it's like the, the sign at McDonald's. They turn the light on so people could see they're open. When we walk in love, it turns the light on for people to see that God is real, that heaven is open, and that God is still on the throne. It lets people see something beyond ourselves. Amen? But now, if we're learning to walk in love, and we're doing this in a way where we're, we're, we, we've exceeded our ability, and now we're flowing in God's ability because that love of God that's been shed abroad in our heart now is coming out and flowing out of us and affecting the people around us. As we're doing this, we realize that there's some things that God did that we need to make sure that we do. Because it says to love like He loved. Well, how did He love? John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave. So if we're going to love the world like God loves the world, we have to be willing to give. Now don't get nervous. We're not taking an extra offering. I saw a couple of you grab your wallets. We're not, we're not looking for that. But we're looking at how did Jesus love us? He gave. What did he give? What did he give? He gave himself. He gave himself. He gave himself as a savior. He gave himself as a prince of peace. He gave himself as a redeemer. He gave himself as a healer. He gave what he had for those who didn't have, right? But there's a saying that says you can, you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. And that's the truth. And that's what we have to learn. And if we had time, we would look at the Bible where it tells us that every single one of us have been given special gifts deposit on the inside of us for the people around us, not for ourselves. And what we have to do is we have to be willing to give of ourselves. If we're going to love people the way that God loves people, it's through giving of ourselves. Well, what do we give? What in the world does it look like for me to give of myself? What does it look like for you to give of yourself? It's called the four T's. You give your time, you give your treasure, you give your talent, and you give your touch. And that's what you do. You Take what God's placed in you, the abilities, the talents, the gifting, and you now make it available to other people. That's how you give of yourself. We have classes here that help you discover how God made you. We believe that your design, your divine design, reveals your destiny, what God created you for. And we have classes to help you discover what he placed in you so you can then feel fulfilled in life. You know, there's just nothing like feel, feeling like you contribute and make a difference in the world. All of us have this on the inside of us. But we don't ever really feel like we're making a difference unless we're allowing ourselves to flow out and to make that difference. The gifts, the talents, the ability, the love that God has placed in us. Does that make sense? So God loves and he gave. He now says for us to love like he loves, and he expects us to give. Give what? Give of ourselves, right? We give of our talent and our treasure. Let's go back. Let's go to Galatians chapter 2.20. Galatians 2.20 says this. The life, this is Paul speaking, so the Apostle Paul. The life I now live in the body. How many of you live in life in the body? Let me see. Some of you won't raise your hand. Pastor Eric, you're not living life in the body. I know you're taking notes. I know. But you're the one I can pick on. I saw other people who were just sitting there going, yes, I ain't raising my hand. But I don't care if you raise your hand. I'm going to walk in love with you anyway because God loves you. Amen. So anyway, the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. So I'm living my life now in God. I'm, I'm in Christ. By being born again, the Bible says that now I've been transferred into this kingdom of light. I've been brought out of the kingdom of darkness, placed in the kingdom of light. And it's not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. It's the life I live in Christ now that makes the difference. Look what it says. Live in the body. I live by faith in the Son of God. Listen, who loved me and gave himself for me. He loved me and he gave himself for me. So if we're going to do this, and we're going to allow this love to come into our lives, to fix and to clean up and to repair and to heal 
and, and to empower us to do what God's called us to do so that we can live out our purpose. And then once we allow that, we receive it. We keep that valve open and we let it flow through us. We're going to do it by loving the way that God loves, and that's by giving of what God's placed inside of us. You know, every one of you were created on purpose with a purpose. And, you know, some people say, oh, I wish I was born back then, or I wish I was born over there. You're right where God wants you. You're here for a reason. There's people who need you to live the life that God created you to live so that they can discover what God has for them. That's the way it works. Every, every joint supplies. We all have a part to play in this. Matthew 10, 8 says this. It says, freely you have received, freely you give. Romans 8, 32 says, he did not spare, but he gave of himself freely. He didn't hold back. He gave freely. So if we receive freely, how many know salvation doesn't cost you a thing? You don't have to do anything to earn it. You don't have to deserve it. All you have to do is say, thank you, Lord, I receive it. That's that love of God. And as you receive that love of God, as you accept that love of God, freely we give, I mean, freely we receive, now we're to freely give. The, the term freely give in New Testament Greek also means this. It says, as you give as favor, favor, and in kindness. So if I receive everything God has for me, and then I'm to freely give what God's given me, I receive it, and then I'm to give as in favor, which means you don't deserve it. I don't love just the people who deserve it, because how many of you know we didn't deserve it when God loved us? While we were yet sinners, the Bible says, he went ahead and did what needed to happen. So if I'm going to receive this, and I'm going to let it freely flow through me, I'm to love people that I don't think deserve it. I'm to love people who don't deserve it. I'm to freely do that. And then it says, and in kindness, in kindness means this, loving people more than they deserve. Loving people more than they deserve. Treating people better than they deserve. That's the full um, thought of that, is to love people more than they deserve and to treat people better than they deserve. Well, you know, Pastor Mike, you may not realize it, but uh, I deserved all of this. And, you know, I worked really hard to be a perfect Christian. And that's it, malarkey. That's when our president says that. Malarkey. None of us deserve. Our very best is filthy rags compared to Jesus. Nothing we do puts us in a position where God owes us anything. The fact that God loves us is because it's his love flowing to us, not that he owes us on our account for something we've, we've accomplished. And you know what? We're to see people that way too. We don't wait till they deserve it. We don't love them when they're lovely. We just love them. We treat them better than they deserve, better than we think they deserve. Right? Because how I many you know we look at some people and we're like, man, that person, they deserve what's coming to them. You ever said that? I have. Unfortunately, I've said it more than I like to admit. And it means that I treat people better than I think they deserve. Why? Because that's what the love of God looks like flowing out of me. That's what a Christian should bring to the table when they come in contact with people that maybe they don't think they're that lovely or they don't think they're that nice. We love them anyway. We love them anyway because this love has got to us and we don't want to stop it. We want to let it flow through us. So we treat better, people better than they deserve and we love people more than they deserve. Does that make sense? Let's go back to Ephesians 5 and we'll get ready to wrap up. We have Jesus as the example. And we need to understand that with God instructing us to do this, we are capable of it. The Bible says that we're to love our neighbor. Let's, let's, let's clarify a little bit here. Who's your neighbor? Who's your neighbor? Person lives next door to you? Right. Person lives around you. But the word neighbor means near. So if I'm at home, the people around me are my neighbor. But if I go over here... I go to the mall, the people that are around me at the mall are now my neighbors. So it's not just address, it's proximity. So who are we to love? We're to love the people we come in contact with. In our walk, in our life, as we're living life, we should be loving people. And that's really the, the calling card that God is on the scene by the love that we carry into the situation. Does that make sense? 
And you know what? You, you may say, well, Pastor Mike, you know, those Democrats, I don't think I can love them. Those Republicans, I just don't know how I can love them. And stuff like that. You're looking at the wrong thing. Stop looking at what you're deciding what they deserve and look at what God says they deserve. You know what? Some people get loved out of their situation. Some people get loved out of the mess. Some people are got a chip on their shoulder and they're angry at the world because they don't think anybody likes them. And they set themselves up ahead of time to be rejected. And if I'm going to be rejected, well, I'm going to deserve it. So they do these things. But if we love them anyway, if we love them more than we think they deserve, if we treat them better than we think they deserve, the love of God can get through and can show itself in such a way where they can say, maybe I'm not being rejected. Maybe I'm not a reject. If that person can love me, maybe God can love me. So many people think they're on the highway to hell because they think there's no way to get to heaven. That's why it's our job to let the love of God flow through us. The whosoever believes. We just got to get them to see it and believe it. We don't got to get them to be perfect. We got to get them to receive that love that God made available to them. Right? Ephesians 5.2. Back to Ephesians 5.2. And walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The New King James says sweet-smelling aroma. So when we're loving people... When we're letting this love flow out of us, it should be a a sweet-smelling aroma because we're doing it as a sacrifice. Just a couple things I need to clear up. When you're walking in love with people, let me give you an example of what's not a sweet-smelling, okay? Oh, so-and-so called, they need help moving. I'll go, and you show up at their house and say, well, you know, I'm really busy, and I got a lot to do, but I'm here for the love of God, bless God. You know, that's not sweet smelling. That's kind of some stinky love, right? That's letting them know you regret coming, and you resent being asked. That's not the love of God. That is not at all what, what God has instructed us to do. Well, I know you need money, and, you know, money's tight for me too, but bless God, love of God, here you go. That's not sweet smelling. That's a bad representation of the love of God. And, and here's the thing, guys. You get this. I'm, I'm kind of strong on this. When you walk in love with people, that doesn't obligate them to you. That doesn't mean they owe you something. We're to love them as unto the Lord. We're, Proverbs 19 says that when we serve, when we do for others, we do it as unto the Lord. It's like lending to the Lord and He repays us. If we go around to people just because we do something nice for them, we expect them to jump through hoops for us, and we expect them to treat us different, and, you know, worship the ground we walk in because I showed up and helped you move a couch. I mean, come on. We're to love them. They're to come into contact with the love of God, not the expression of our self-centeredness. Does that make sense? So we don't show up with a sour puss on our face and, well, you know, Pastor Mike said I had to help, so I'm here. Don't come. Don't come because you're working against what God's trying to do through us. Amen? Show up with a good attitude. When you're here serving, serve with a good attitude. Well, i got to go back in children's again. We don't need you that bad. If you don't want to be with the kids, we don't want you with the kids. If you don't like to greet people at the door, don't greet people like, oh, you're late. Where have you been the last two weeks? Come on. We don't need that. There's people who do that. People walk in, you haven't seen, you know, right now, let me tell you, on every, look how many empty seats we have. There's a lot of empty seats today. But you know, every Sunday, there's at least a third of us are not here. Every Sunday, a third of the church doesn't show up. Now, some of you are sitting there going, he's talking to me. I think we could do better. I think we should come to God's house like he tells us to. But what I'm saying is when people walk in and they haven't, be here, haven't been here, don't. Well, look who's here today. Haven't seen you in a while. That's stinky. That's not sweet smelling. That's not loving. We should just celebrate the fact they're here. Not talk about what they haven't done, but hey, you're here. We celebrate you. Does that make sense? It's got to be sweet smelling. It's the way that we do things. So we do it, and what did it say? It says we do it as a sacrifice. We do it as unto the Lord. When we go and serve people, when we love on people, We do it because it's the love of God flowing, 
not to get them obligated. Well, I helped you move that couch. You know, I'm going to be moving in two weeks. I expect to see you there. That's not loving. That's investing. Trying to get a return out of what you've done. When we give the love of God, it's because it's unto the Lord, not unto them. That way there's a freedom for them to receive it without feeling like they owe you. Because some people, they feel like they're going to owe you, they're going to reject it. They're going to say, no, I don't want it. If I'm going to owe you, I don't want it. Why do you think Jesus freely came? He came so that we could just receive him. Not that we have to become robots for God. It's after we experience the love that we want to serve God, but we don't receive the love and then know we're going to be in bondage to God from now on. Because working for God is not bondage, it's the joy of our lives. Does that make sense? So, as we do this, we learn how to love God completely. We learn how to love self correctly. And we learn how to love others compassionately the way that God loved them. It's a big chain reaction that we first have to receive that love from God. We have to let it do the work that it needs to do on the inside of us. And then as we handle that love right, we let it flow through us so that the people around us can be impacted by that love and can know that God loves them right where they are and he accepts them where they are so they have the freedom to come and to receive from him in church. Does that make sense? And if we'll all do that, this place will be packed in no time. The world will come because the world is dying to be accepted and to be loved. They feel rejected. They feel judged. They feel condemned. They don't want any part of that. I grew up in a church where I felt condemned. I had long hair. I loved rock music. And, and everybody looked at me. They even told me, so you know you're going to hell with that long hair. And I'd say something smart like, well, does that mean you're not going to be there? I'd rather go there. You know, 15, 16-year-old kid, my parents would get mad at me for smarting off to the people in church. But I couldn't stand the fact they all wanted to judge me and condemn me, and they didn't even know me. And because that was the representative of Jesus, I didn't want anything to do with Jesus. It wasn't until I learned that God loved me right where I was. In all my mess, in all the things I've done wrong, he loved me and accepted me. And when I experienced that love, I couldn't help but tell everybody about it. Amen? So let's take this love. Let's let it flow into us. Let's let it do the work it needs to do. And then let's let it flow through us. And next week we start a new series because the life we now live is in Him. We're going to see what we're empowered to do and how it looks, what it looks like to live life in Christ. To what it means to be a Christian. To what it means to be in Christ and living out the plan He has for us. Amen? Amen. So bow your heads and close your eyes. Thank you for your attention today. Father, we thank you for your word that you watch over your word to perform it. I thank you for every ear here has been open, every heart's been prepared to receive. And Father, right now, with nobody looking around, we just take a moment. We ask ourselves, am I where I want to be with God? Have I really ever opened up and accepted the love of God? Have I allowed Jesus to come in and to be Lord of my life? Going to church doesn't make the difference. Hanging out with Christians doesn't make the difference. It's a choice of your will, individually. If what I'm talking about is speaking to you and you say, you know what, I need this. I'm not asking you to join so you can act like me or you can talk like me. I'm asking you just to open your heart and receive all the love that God has for you. If you'll do that, he'll come in and he'll heal those broken spots. He'll set you free from those things that got you in bondage. He'll free you up to be the person he created you to be. And if I'm speaking to you online, this is for you too. There's no distance in the spirit. So looking around the room, everybody here today, if you would like to open your life up, and I'm talking about sincere opening up and saying, Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I receive you. I'm receiving you as my Lord and Savior. I'm receiving the love of God that sent you to this world to pay the price for my sin so that I could be set free from my sin. If that's you and you want that, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand, looking around right now. Is there anybody here? You say, that's me, preacher. I need to receive that. I see your hand. Anybody else? You're saying, you're talking to me. I see your hand. Amen. I see your hand. Amen. Is there anybody else? You just, man, just something you heard is like, okay, I see your hand. Anybody else? All right, I see your hand in the back. For the sake of every person here that raised their hand, let's say this prayer as a family. Ready? We're going to say it together. Father, today, I know beyond the shadow of a doubt you love me right where I'm at you love me 
in spite of me. You come, you clean, you wash away, you restore, and you heal as I open my heart to you. According to Romans, if I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ is my Lord and I am saved. Amen. So let's say this. Father, today I am born again, saved, set free, and equipped and prepared to love the people in my world. In Jesus' name, amen.